Hey guys, coming at you with some allyship tips. Um, it's been a while since I've talked about allyship, been focusing more on mastering the game of life, but as I've been delving deeply into the work that I'm doing with my book and in light of recent events, I just wanted to give you all a refresher on some of like the fundaments of effective allyship that I'll be real very recently have shown up for me. And you know, since the book's not gonna come out for a little while, I figured I'd share it with you as soon as possible. It has to do with power. We're gonna be talking about power. A lot of people's definition of allyship involves giving power to someone else. Say if someone is in a disempowered state, you're an ally to them if you give them power. But this is contingent upon you having power, being able to own your power. You can't give what you don't have. So there are ways in which we will unconsciously empower people with the power that we don't want to own, but it usually ends up being random, weird, and most importantly, not particularly satisfying. So you can only have satisfying allyship when you're able to empower someone in a way that you know is happening and in a way that's in alignment with who you want to be, which means you got to kind of know who it is that you want to be when you're being an ally. Second thing that's very important, aside from just getting over your power allergy. You're going to have to be really powerful to give your power away. But most importantly, you can only ally with people in one of two ways. You can ally with individuals, named individuals, not abstract types of people, but named individuals, people with names. If you want to be an ally to me, you will be an ally to Wendell Britt. And so the set of specific needs that a Wendell Britt has are the only thing that you're going to really be able to interface with if you want to have a satisfying allyship experience, because I'll be able to tell you, hey, thanks, man, you helped me in the exact way that I want it to do. Um, at the higher levels, you'll start being able to anticipate different needs that I might have, depending on whatever journey is sort of going on with you. But you're only going to be able to help me if you know my name. And so a lot of people get frustrated because they're trying to help people who they don't know. And it's hard to help people you don't know. Santa is the only one that does that. But even in that mythos, like he knows everything about people. So don't try and ally that way. Unless... There is a way to do it. If you want to ally with a group, you will need to be an influential, powerful part of a separate group. Because if you're inside a group, let's say me as a black person, I want to ally with black people, I'm really allying with myself, which is totally fine. Totally happy to do that. But because there sometimes is a survival sense, it can sometimes be a little bit more difficult for me to feel like I've satisfied, satisfyingly allied with people who are like me. I'll actually need to kind of take a step away, let's say a dungeon master, coach, writer, all these skill sets that I have when I hold on to those identities and then ally with black people, I'm using now my specific identity in dynamic tension. I'm sort of separating myself from the identity so I can use the powers that afford me from someone who is different. Not all black people are writers, so me as a writer can help black people in a different way. But I have to be an influential writer. <laughs> And that's the key is if I'm going to use my identity as a, a group to ally with a different group, it stands to reason I'm going to have to be a powerful member of that group. I'm going to have to be one of the best writers on the planet to meaningfully close the satisfaction loop for using my writing to help people. This is something that has been top of mind as I keep thinking about this damn book that I'm writing. Um, and so I wanted to tease that out because I see a lot of people trying to be an ally for a large group of folk without encountering the fact that they personally don't have the power or influence to make any meaningful change on that. That's a really quick way to get very uh, dissatisfied, delusioned, and just feel powerless. And if you're feeling powerless, you can now not give power to someone else. So if you want to hack, focus on individuals, focus on people you actually know, because that feedback loop is really shorter. And if you're going to go for a group, make sure that you're allying with another group from a position of power of a group that actually has influence so that you can also see when those satisfaction loops close. If you don't, it's going to be a rough time. That's all I can tell you. Um, so let me know how that lands for you and happy allying out there. <laughs>